Back tonight, Chair Keown in Focus, thanks for staying on. About 28 unions representing half a million security guards have announced they might go on strike this month. This follows a deadlock in wage talks with employers. Uh, some unions are calling for a much, uh, as much rather as 16% increment against their employer's 5% offer. Unions are hoping to have uh, the picketing rules agreed to by the 12th of September. Uh, many others hope the protest action will not be the repeat of the deadly 2006 strike that resulted in the death of 60 people. Joining us now for an update on this is Kumbulani Moyo, National Coordinator at Nkunguini Amalgamated uh, Workers uh, Union. But Moyo, good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time. What are the key areas of disagreement except for the obvious one around the, the percentage that have... Uh, uh, led to a deadlock in these negotiations. Uh, thank you, Tabo, and thank you also to your viewers and also to all the workers, especially the security officers who are following us uh, this evening. The other four key areas that uh, have led us to a deadlock, uh, one of the issues is the medical insurance, uh, which was... Um, uh, uh, implemented or started to be implemented at the planning council uh, last year where the employers are refusing and they want to totally cancel it out which is a social benefit that the unions negotiated it over the number of years uh, to get it to start going from the planning council as of last year. Then the second issue is the issue of the provident fund. The provident fund the, during the time of COVID uh, there was a reduction of 5% contribution of, uh, uh, of, from the employers and 5% to the employees. Uh, the employers, they want the status quo to remain as it is. Uh, while this, the original status quo was 7.5 and 7.5 contribution on both uh, ends, which is the employers and the employees. Then the, the third issue is the issue of the family responsibility leave where currently the employees in terms of the main collective agreement, they are entitled to uh, five, five days when they've got any family issue in terms of their family responsibility leave. The employers, they want to revert back to the minimum requirements which are entrenched in the basic condition of employment. Then the, the last one is the issue of the severance pay, uh, where if there is an issue of Section 189, Employees get retrenched or the company gets liquidated or it closes down or contracts get terminated as most of the working government contracts, which are normally three or five years. Uh, we want that to be moved to two weeks. The employers, they are still sticking to a one week of each completed year. Yeah. So those are some of the issues that have led us to be where we are. Uh, but the biggest one is the one that you started up with, where the employers currently they are sitting at 3.5%. In regard with the, the annual increment on the basic salary, and we are demanding in terms of the mandates that have been given by the workers, the collective, less than 28 unions, the 16% on each year. If you quantify it in rand, it's roughly about 900 rand for the first year on a grade C. You would know in this sector there's a grade C, there's grade B, and there's grade A. So we demanding that. Uh, uh, in terms of the mandate, it's a 900 rand for the first year, and the additional 900 rand on the second year, and then the additional 900 rand on the third year. Yeah. So the, these are some of the key issues, but the way we get in this biggest gambling block is especially on the first year. The, there was an agreement before the current one that uh, is coming to an end, that an issue of a premium allowance which is 439, it needs to be incorporated. So now the employers, what they are raising, they are raising it as an issue to say, already is an increment, so it's not taking us anywhere. Yeah. Uh, for the past six months, we've been stuck on one point. Well, what, what are the salary ranges currently uh, the, across the board? I mean, I know it depends also on the role, but it also depends on the security company that, you, that you're working for. I mean, are these kind of demands that you're making affordable across the board uh, on all security companies? The security salaries are a standard. Uh, they only differ in two ways. There's what we call areas. Uh, area... Um, 
area one is more of your metropolitan, your big cities, your big districts, your big towns. Then there is also uh, area three, which is more of your rural uh, areas and small districts and small towns. But it doesn't differ much. I think the difference between those areas in a normal accuracy is a difference of a, roughly about 80 rand. But with a normal basic salary of a grade C officer, which is an ordinary security officer, which you see either in your offices or in your front entrances or in the malls or across in the schools or work at the infrastructure, they are grade C officers. Their minimum salary currently is 5,036 rand. That's their basic salary. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a maximum of about 18 hours, which is about 208 hours, which they work in a month. Now, it's already noted, I mean, that the, the, the security company, private security companies have got literally more uh, security force than the South African police, certainly more than the South African uh, defense force put together. So uh, a, a strike by security guards could certainly spell disaster for the entire country and businesses in particular. It's not even a, a disaster, uh, uh, Tabo. It will cause uh, one of the biggest, um, uh, we can't even quantify. That's why we've been, been locked up in these negotiations for the, uh, such a long time. If we were not looking at that, we would have been pulled out of the negotiations as early as in, uh, the beginning of April, because we saw uh, in terms of their approach. It's correct also in terms of how we are putting it. Uh, the, if you recall the 2006 strike, uh, there was even an intervention from the national government. By then, the national police uh, even came in to say, guys, sit down and try and resolve this issue. And uh, we are saying that we are still open for the employers to say, let them bring a, a, a tangible a proposal that will talk to next to what the demands we have put on the table. Failure to that, uh, we have highlighted to our members and also notified our members that if there isn't any movement from the employer towards our demands, unfortunately on the 26th we will have to put our tools down and until such that the, such time that the employers are able to come back and uh, engage in a proper negotiation and in good faith. And, and uh, where is that process now currently sitting? I mean, I believe the employers are still saying that kind of uh, 16% is unaffordable, but where is the process now? The process where it is uh, is that we will be going back on the, on the 1st of September where we are going to be submitting what is called uh, the picketing rules. Uh, these picketing rules are in change in the Reparations Act to say let's look at these picketing rules in case... Uh, you are not prepared to move, and then if there are any additional issues which they want to deal with, if they are not prepared to give us an offer that we can be able to take to our members, then on the 15th we need to sign off those picketing rules, then we will inform our members in terms of which areas are they going to be picketing on, what are the requirements, and then also the commissioners, uh, they will issue what is called a non-resolution of the matter, uh, which will give us what we call a certificate of strike. Uh, that will be a protected strike to all the security officers. Yeah. The, the Fidelity Services Group CEO seems to, to think that the, the 1st and the 12th would, would still be two dates afforded uh, to continue the wage negotiations. Has he got the wrong end of the stick there? If he says that, uh, he needs to table. Uh, he knows uh, I think they've been part of the negotiation uh, team. They know exactly what we 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 have tabled to them. Uh, if they are saying that, let's hope on the on the first they'll be able to table what they are saying. Uh, they want to table. We 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 still open to look at what they will be table. But as we speak now, I want to tell you the fact: there's nothing that they've tabled to us. They've came with different options which are not what we have mandated. With. Uh, in terms of our members. If they've got something, we welcome that. We'll look at that on the, on the first, uh, when we get there, uh, when we submit our picketing rules. The National Coordinator for KUA, Kungwini Amalgamated uh, Workers Union, Kumbulani Moya, I appreciate your time, and thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, tonight uh, here on In Focus.